Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noding. Um, in this episode, we're gonna do a bit of uh, improvisation um, using Spreadshock add-on and Animation Notes add-on. Basically, the idea is to work with um, with any image and then kind of try to break the image into like a smaller pieces and then animate it procedurally. Um, so yeah, just let's get started. I have an image already here that I will load um, using import image as planes. So I start with this image. By default, this image is uh, <clears throat> in the dimension of this size, 1.296 and 1. So that's okay. We gonna we can change that at any point. I want to see the texture first. So it's looking something like this. It's an abstract structure that I did using Spherechalk. Um, now I'm gonna save this real quick. File save as and save it as procedural abstract. Just whatever. And the next thing we're gonna do is to go to compositing turn on spread chalk and let's create um, some kind of uh, mesh any kind of mesh will work in this case I I will just use a grid mesh so plane and viewer viewer draw let's create something that's gonna generate that grid I'm gonna push this original one to the back and I will center the plane and we'll make some kind of subdivisions. I'll try to make it so it fits um, our image somehow. So I'll make it smaller. It doesn't need to be square, actually it can be any kind of um, shape. For now I'll just keep it like a uh, kind of like a grid like I can actually have more here so it's more like a vertical okay I think something like that will do and what's to do next okay I'll try to uh, I'm gonna break every polygon face so they're like a uh, separate individual mesh and I will be using um, separate or extrude separate faces. So this uh, can break every polygon face into separate element. If we pick the extruded polygon, I think, and then scale it down a little bit. Okay, that's uh, that's the plan view autographic let's check it out we still have control over the size so I'll try and make it to cover our original image okay that's um, now that's done if we bake it out this is like a, a single mesh just like that so we can we can turn off spare chop for now and then so we have this mesh already so we can imagine of these guys like a, a bunch of uh, cards. And the next thing I like to do is to this process to transfer this uh, UV into our mesh. For now, I will be using this modifier and do it manually. But at some point, I want, I want to use uh, maybe Python to do this. So in order to for this to work, we need to have some kind of UV. So hit tab, tab U, and then just unwrap it. So now it has some kind of UV, and I'll apply the material into this guy. And currently the UV is totally wrong, but we can use a modifier. And UV project, get our image, use our UV map, override, and for projector, um, here's the interesting part for the projector we can actually um, 
we can use some kind of reference so this is going to be our reference um, object and try to match this into our original image so that's the plan kind of scaling it like that in the X and okay that's pretty close so this guy is our reference image I can just hide it and back to this guy use our reference image and there you go that's uh, basically our projected UV so that's kind of cool uh, now we have this guy it's done we just hit uh, apply and we are good I'm gonna save this just in case and then hit apply now we have these objects we can do anything with this um, any kind of modify modifier can actually work if you like so distorted noise is I think this is new yeah uh, if you like to do that but I'm not gonna use displacement I will be using animation nodes for this so um, control G I will group these objects and then I will separate loose and the next thing I will do oh actually there's an extra object there probably generated uh, by sphere chop um, well try to clean it up well actually a better way I'll go back to this step and I want to get rid of the stray vertices so delete loose so we are getting rid of the extra vertices there and then hit apply file save as new blend file and then we group it and separate loose and now we have a clean object but their p4 is wrong so I'll have to select all of them set origin to geometry and now we can basically kind of uh, scramble our image separately using animation nodes okay so our job using spare chalk is done so we can uh, stop the processing now switch to animation nodes new okay let's do something here select um, let's let's source our objects from group uh, since we already group it we just select it now we have our objects inside animation nodes and we can animate them um, first of all create object transform output if we just uh, be careful when you do this uh, you need to have some kind of um, original position before you do anything with animation nodes make sure you always store the initial transform so select all these objects click click on the, this initial transform kind of uh, reset and then after you do that um, when you do this see you see all the objects goes to 0 0 0 you don't want that you, don't, you want to use the object ID and then use uh, use the initial transform and so for these objects you can always refer to original position like so okay now we are ready to animate this you can animate it in any way you like maybe like transforming the scale or rotations etc I think I will be using just a vector offset so offset vectors will do the job so this position is the original position and we can animate it into random position if you like so let's try that so random vector and plug this in increase the scale you see some of them already flying 
all over the place. We need to increase the total number until all the objects are included. Okay, I think we are we are getting them. Yeah, I think it's correct, and we are ready. Uh, how many objects we need? How many random vector we need uh, to check? Use uh, list length. So this is the objects, and let's check using the viewer node. Seventy-eight. Okay, plug this into this guy, and we can just play around with this randomness. So that, if that's what you like, that's uh, your animations pretty much um, ready. With the fall off, you can play around. Of course, we have a lot of fall off. You already learned this. Um, remap, wiggle, evaluate. Uh, where's uh, my favorite is uh, delay. I think it's pretty simple. Using the delay, it's gonna scramble our image one by one. It's the durations that uh, you can use some kind of uh, bounce or back. So this will do it, I think, one by one. Um, there's a better one. Fall off, remap, wiggle. I haven't used this for a while. Fall off, um, constant, directional fall off, maybe. Oh well, this one is a little bit complex, so I'm not gonna do that. But anyhow, this is the whole process, and it shouldn't be too difficult. And yeah, I think basically, uh, because I'm using Sphere Chalk to design this grid, we, we can always change the grid into any kind of um, uh, like a mesh that you, you want, even like a, maybe like a puzzle or any kind of abstract structure will work. And we just need to project the, the UV from the original image. So let's get the original image somewhere here. So that's the original image. And this is our um, our random randomized image. If we combine the two, then you get something that's quite abstract. A view, top view. So maybe that's kind of things that you like. And you can always render this out like that. So it looks quite nice. And you can animate it as well. Um, okay, so yeah, that's I guess pretty much it for this uh, live coding. It's kind of random. It's pretty much improvisation using Blender, Spreadshock add-on, and animation nodes. Hopefully you find this useful. Uh, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.